James Brooks, please. Can you see my screen? Yes, good start. Does my clicker work? It does seem to be working, cool. I'm learning lessons as we go. Um, okay, secrets of the Laravel team. Before we get into that, I hope you all had a really nice break, got some coffee, water, fresh air. Um, I just wanna take a second now. Everybody get themselves comfortable into the seats. Looks like you're all comfortable. These seats are really good. I'm very, very happy with these. Okay, secrets of the Laravel team. Who am I to talk about the secrets of the magical Laravel team? I'm James. I am a software engineer at Laravel. I have been there for five years. So I'd like to say that I'm a senior engineer at Laravel. Um, but no, not yet. <laughs> Maybe one day. I'm from the UK. And I know you're probably thinking when I walked on, didn't we listen to this guy first thing this morning? Uh, Joe and I did not talk about our costume choice. Um, and <laughs> so I've rolled my sleeves up so you can tell it's me. Um, well, where's Joe? He's got his sleeves down, we're good. <laughs> I love Marmite, if you can't tell that um, from all of the Marmite references and the fact that it was the best one on stage. Um, and you can find me anywhere at Jbrooks UK. Let's get to it. So Laravel, okay. I'm not gonna explain what Laravel is, but I think uh, it is more than the framework that we all think of it as to begin with. It is uh, an ecosystem, and more importantly, look around at yourselves, it is a community, a community that travels the world, maybe just comes next door sometimes, but they come together to talk about, to learn about, and to just be fans of Laravel. Laravel is a PHP framework. Like, just think about that for a second. It's a PHP framework that we travel the world, get all excited and hyped up about. I get to come on stage and be like, woo, Laravel. Like, it's wild to me. And my friends at home, my normal friends, they don't understand it. Um, and I think, but I try and explain it, and I send them pictures of what I'm up to, and I think it, it's an incredible, um, like, life, really, for all of us. Okay, Laravel, 12 and a half years, um, Taylor released version one-ish. Uh, it quickly gained in popularity, and uh, as a bit of a history, Ian at Userscape hired Taylor to work on Laravel to build their SaaS and then it grew better, and Ian, godfather of Laravel, encouraged Taylor to start a Laracon, and now we're here. I think Taylor said he's done 20 more? I don't know, something like that. It's still crazy. Um, okay. Up until now, 305 million downloads, give or take. Packages stopped uh, registering downloads at some point. 305 million. Okay, it's not Spartsy, but this is just the Laravel framework. So I did some number crunching, which, please check this, because I uh, failed my maths exam three times, uh, but that equates to, on average, about four downloads a second over any last 24-hour period. Then I did more numbers, and it turns out that would be about 380 million downloads by the end of the year, so it's an exponential growth. I think I've used that word right, who knows. Um, and that's not including the 47 open source packages that we have, first party, um, or our paid packages, which are Laravel Nova and Spark. So when you put all of those together, I think we're beating Spark's here. I think we're making good progress there. Now, we're not just the framework company, we're not just uh, packages, first party packages. We also have three services, Forge, Envoy, and Vapor. I primarily work on Forge, sometimes Envoy, um, at Laravel. And you, if you're not familiar with Laravel, the team, you might be forgiven, or you, could, you definitely could be forgiven, for thinking that this is a team of 20, 30, 40, 100 developers. We consistently ship high quality, incredibly useful packages and features. And I'm bigging myself up there, obviously, but the team who um, are all, well, mostly here today, do a fantastic job. Well, no, we're eight engineers, eight full-stack engineers, 
two support engineers, one educator. Of course, we have one Taylor Rotwell, so we are at an advantage. <laughs> um, but we're also more than that. We're 3,000 plus. We're 3,011 people, and then some. Um, 3,000 contributors to the framework alone. What an incredible, incredible number that is. <laughs> and of course, not everyone contributes to the framework, not everybody contributes to packages, but you here today, yeah, solid animation. Uh, you here today are also part of that, and um, I know that uh, I and the rest of the team are incredibly grateful, the conference organizers, the people that you reach out to, ask for help, provide help, all of the Laracast community. Um, yeah, I think that deserves another round of applause, to be honest, because it's not just the contributors. <laughs> I am counting these as my applause, by the way. So we are a worldwide team. There are, we span nine countries, and uh, as we all know as developers, we hate time zones, but we should be about eight time zones, <laughs> um, give or take, depends what the world wants us to do. And we are spread very much across the world. We're such a small team that our faces fit on one slide, which I like. Um, so. We have Taylor taking up the US, and then there's Gus, Nuno, myself, Joe, Dries, and Christoph in Europe, Mohammed in Egypt, Mior in Malaysia, and Tim in Australia in, uh, Tim in Australia, Tim and Jess in Australia. I was gonna say Tim and Jess, Australia, Australia. Okay, so how do we do it? We're spread across the world. Um, we often, when we get together, we do Laravel Q&As. Last year we did three. Uh, Australia was the most recent one with India and Lisbon as well. And I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see, but look at Tim's face. He's having the best time of his life. <laughs> it's an incredibly privileged position to be in and, and we enjoy it so much. But it all boils down to what's our secret? Everybody wants to know what tools we use, how we communicate, how we stay on top of things, and how we continue to release the quality that you've come to expect. So, bearing in mind, right, I, sent, I tried to get Taylor's approval for this talk, and uh, I didn't get it, but I also didn't get a yes or a no. Uh, so, I'm immune, giving myself complete immunity to any firings from this talk. So let's think Laravel the company, Laravel LLC, not the framework or the products, but the, the company that has the uh, team. What is it that we use that, um, or that we do rather, that makes us so efficient? Well, into the door. You're coming into the inner circle, everybody, except for Luke Downing, wherever he is, he can get out. Um, so. Firstly, we have no managers. It's a very flat organization. Uh, Taylor is the BDFL, if I get that in the right order, uh, for both the framework and the company. We don't have meetings. Um, we do remote pair, but we don't call that meetings, and it, there is no hardship when I try and call Joe and he says no. I uh, don't, don't hold that to any uh, personal meaning. Uh, we have decades of combined experience, and that also means that aside from being able to leverage the community, we're also able to leverage each other's skills. If there is anything uh, like billing related, I know Dries is the man for that. If I need server experience, I speak to Gus. We work semi-asynchronously. I would like to say that we work fully async, but that would be a lie. We're spread across the world, um, and we do have to wait for time zones. I had to put it in a bottle because I'm so nervous, I'll, I'll knock everything over. Okay, uh, Taylor continues to create, uh, create the tasks that we work on. So aside from creating the framework, what features go into it, that also applies to the company. And we do have um, like the say in what we do, but um, at the end of the day, Taylor is the one that decides, does this feature match the quality that we should be providing? And most importantly, we're trusted as developers. All of us have decades of experience anyway, and many years of experience with Laravel. And so we've kind of been indoctrined into the way of doing things that Laravel does. Um, so when we came in, it was a very easy onboarding experience for us. 
and we leverage the community. Kaneko designs all of the logos. Uh, we have Laracasts and um, the, the community support. You, your support is what makes us able to continue doing that. Okay, ready artisans? I had to get that in there somewhere, right? <clears throat> so, the Laravel stack. What tools do we use to manage our projects to um, collaborate across the world? Well, there's a few, and we'll start with GitHub. For those of you who don't know what GitHub is, we host our code on there, our open source and private repositories. Uh, of course, pull requests are made there and uh, issues, and it is a big part of the collaboration effort aside from the team, but with the community in general. Everyone is able to look into the code, understand the decisions that went into that, and hopefully contribute back as well. Uh, discussions on the framework for features or issues that we're having, or customers, that users are having rather. Um, oh, oh well, we're on Basecamp now. So <laughs> um, we use Basecamp, which is a project management platform, but it also does a lot for us as well. So we're using it with our calendar. We're, we are a remote team, so I can't just pop my head up and see if uh, anyone, is on, anyone is around. So we put our holiday and vacation times in there. We use daily check-ins. So every day at four o'clock, we're asked, what did we do today? What do we achieve? What do we struggle with? And typically, it's just a bullet point list of the four or five things that we were able to do, handle support, created a pull request, did some cool stuff. We use a message board. So every, that's, oh, animation's moved. Um, we use a message board, no, 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 it's all over the place. We use a message board. Uh, Taylor, at the start of every month, will give us a four-week cycle that we work on, and that will include uh, tasks and who's assigned to what. And normally, they come with like a, a paragraph or so in the way that he would like us to approach it. Is there anything that we should take into consideration? Um, and also, we have flexibility as trusted developers of the team to maybe not be the person that we're, that works on it is the person that's assigned to it, um, or we can collaborate and do it in our way, the way that we're trusted to do. Happening now is just like a Kanban board of who's doing what, and we can assign things to Taylor's inbox. Uh, he can go through those as he wishes. Slack, um, Joe already told us what Slack is. <laughs> Real-time chats, company chats, we use this exclusively. Uh, we do do a couple of different things, I guess. We have a channel per product, which is either a, a package or an actual service. And we also have some additional channels, deployments. So if we're deploying to Forge, Envoy, and Vapor, we just put a bullet point list of what's changed. And then everyone is on the same page of where that product is. We also have an emergency channel. Uh, if anything bad happens, we can go there, collaborate together, and hopefully f resolve the issue together. Um, this also works really well as like a, um, a tool for us to be able to go back and look at the problems that we've had in the past and hopefully address those in the future. We talk to our external connections, Stripe and Paddle, for instance, but also other companies um, that are in that Slack. And of course, we observe universal morning time. Uh, so everybody says morning, all in lowercase, otherwise you're in trouble, uh, Christoph. And, um, <laughs> Help Scout is our customer support platform. Uh, we use Help Scout very heavily, actually. Um, we have an inbox for every product that we, that we run, including the paid packages. Um, we use hundreds of saved replies. So in the instance we're not able to uh, automatically resolve an issue in, say, Forge, at least we can do a consistently high quality saved reply um, with all of the most up-to-date information. We leverage automatic workflows a lot. So our business and priority customer, business and premium customers get priority support. We can mark those as such and raise them up in the uh, list of emails that we get. And we have custom integrations across all of our products, so we're able to pull out customer information, jump to Stripe or our customer uh, Nova backend. And of course, we can send messages. Uh, Freak mentioned yesterday the support bubble. Essentially the same thing. You can contact us. It will go into Help Scout. But we can also send messages back through that uh, to target customers about like two-factor authentication, that kind of thing. Tuple. Tuple is a game changer if you haven't used it. 
um, is a remote pairing platform um, for Windows and Linux. I'm not sure if, uh, sorry, Mac and Linux. I'm not sure if Windows is there yet. Uh, we are also able to use it, aside from just internally with each other, we're also able to pair with customers so we can really deep dive into something if we need to with them. We have team rooms to hang out in. Tim and Jess have the Cool Kids Clubhouse, which I've been invited to once, and that was the best day of my life. Uh, Joe, I'm, dude, I'm on stage. Um, okay, so recently I was reading, um, or I was listening to an audio book, uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear, and there's a point where he says to optimize for the 1%. Take all of your tasks and optimize it just by 1%, and combined, you will have a much bigger optimization. It's also easier to make smaller optimizations than big optimizations, just like refactoring code. Um, and I kind of think that we've taken this without really knowing about it as well. We used to use Telegram for messaging when there was just four of us. We soon outgrew that. That was a nightmare. Uh, we used to use Trello for um, project management, but then we were like, hang on, we use everything for Basecamp, so let's just go into there and keep it all together, right? It's much easier to onboard new members of staff because there's way less to actually learn about. And we keep it lean. We use five services. Obviously, we're not including Cloudflare and uh, DigitalOcean, that kind of thing. But the tools that we use to manage our projects, very simple. Secrets of a Laravel application. I am running out of time. OK. Firstly, we stick to conventions. I think Laravel uh, has very good conventions. Absolutely not biased. But I do think it is very, very well laid out framework. So we, of course, stick to the Laravel directory structure, which you are free to make changes to. We add our own uh, directories and namespaces in there. We use Pint, not Pint, but Pint for formatting. Um, and we automate a lot of that into GitHub CI. So even while we're developing, we don't need to be constantly running it or setting up hooks or anything like that. Uh, and we also leverage GitHub CI for um, releases and change logs, that kind of thing. We've just automated as much as we can. And we dog feed our own projects, not just as Laravel, the company, using Laravel products, but also we're all developers at our core, and we, uh, are, we were and we still are customers of the products that we also create. So for instance, there have been times on Forge when I've been using it, and I'm like, this is not as good as it could be. Put a pin on that, come back on Monday, and we improve it. And I can see you all sat there like, dude, is that it? I came to Amsterdam to learn about Basecamp. Well, yeah, <laughs> you did. Um, it feels kind of underwhelming, right? But in a way, I think it shows that Laravel, as productive as we are and um, as nimble as we are, we're still like every other development company. We still use the same tools. We've just optimized and found what works for us. So, Hopefully, maybe you could take one or two tools away with you and see how that works for your company, or even just optimize the 1%. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, there's something to learn there. Uh, one thing we do, and perhaps we are in a privileged position to, to do this, but we stop when things aren't working out. So for instance, this uh, Laravel panel that Taylor and Joe have mentioned previously, I started working on this a year and a half before it actually shipped. Now, the result is really good, and it was worth the wait. But prior to that, it looked like this. And like, it, it's fine. It does the exact same thing. But notice that it was called integrations, and it's four things down from the top of the screen. This is Laravel Forge with Laravel the framework. We can detect that you are using Laravel. So let's take it front and center. Let's just make it a quick toggle on and off. So we put it to bed. We let it marinate, as Taylor says. And uh, truth be told, we forgot about it as well for a while. But when we came back to it, it felt a lot better. We knew what it was that we wanted to do. Just let it sit. OK, who wants to see some code in four minutes? So we're going to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> so in Forge, uh, which is a server provisioning and management platform, we SSH into servers, we run some bash, and then depending on the exit code of that, we return some state or alerts or whatever. Now, Forge is like 10 years old. It's worked perfectly f for 10 years. But as we've grown and we've added the Laravel panel, we've needed to improve things. So Tim took it upon himself to 
do exactly that. So the current provisioning system had a couple of issues. The first was that every time we needed to run multiple things, like installing a site, configuring an environment file, restarting Nginx, we would have to make three connections to your server, which is wasteful from our side, but also wasteful for you. We had duplicated concerns. Everything could be restarting Nginx all of the time, and that was just a little bit weird. And it wasn't reusable. We weren't able to just kind of group these things together and then run them as we needed to. So for the Laravel panel, we had a lot of duplication where we needed to add daemons, do something else, then restart supervisor. So Tim, the legend that he is, the Oracle, <laughs> rewrote it. We are going to go back to white. I hope it fades and you don't all get blinded. But um, here we have this provision dispatch. We give it the server that we want to connect to. It opens a persistent connection and then runs through the list of provisioners that we want to run, pulls out the scripts, and kind of does some funky string stuff to decide which output goes where. Uh, so here we're enabling maintenance mode. We pass through the site, and then we restart Nginx. Much simpler. How does it work? Well, each provisioner implements a few methods, uh, and we'll go through those now. So for enable maintenance mode, we have an event which returns an array. We have a description, enable in maintenance mode. The description and the event are basically the audit trail in Forge. There's an events panel, and you can see what's happened. Then we have this uh, script method, which can return a, a view, like a, a blade view or a string. In this case, we're returning a view with this script's namespace, Laravel enable maintenance mode, and we pass through the site. Now, all of our code is actually bash for this. So we do this thing where we register an extension, which are, for, in this case, shell scripts, and then we run it with the blade compiler. And we add a namespace, the scripts directory, in the root of our project. So we're not within resources views. We don't want to muddy the waters there. And then we have this after hook, which gives us the output of the bash script. So maybe when we're syncing databases, we want to list all the databases. We can then do something with that data. In this case, we're just resetting maintenance mode to be true and removing the status from enabling. And then likewise, we have a failed hook, which gives us an exception. So maybe we weren't able to connect to your server. Maybe you've run out of disk space and we couldn't do anything. So we set the maintenance mode to false and the status back to null. And then finally, we have a unique ID. So uh, we don't want you to be able to click enable maintenance mode six times and try and do the exact same thing. So the queue will just disregard the, um, the duplicates. And that's really it. It made it, here we go. You didn't just like light up like the sun, so that's good. Um, we now have a single server connection. We have testable, unit testable code. Uh, and as we're using Blade, we're able to test for all these different states. And everything is atomic now, so we're able to just pull out, install in a supervisor daemon, and then restart in supervisor. And that is it. There is a bit about like a, a day in the life of a Laravel developer, but I am 10 seconds left of time, so we'll, we will leave that. But um, yeah, that's everything I have. You know what I have, right? Mm. I have questions. Are you ready? Hit me. So, James is asking, what's the favorite thing that you worked on Forge? Um, the Laravel panel or database backups. Did you ever mess up? Uh, <laughs> No. <laughs> Why'd you keep getting fired then? Uh, that, that's unrelated. <laughs> uh, just taking my time. So, Mr. Luke Downing mm -hmm. is asking, will there be a public apology for, from you for calling him a nincompoop? I don't know what Nincompoop. <laughs> nincompoop. <laughs> uh, where are you, Luke? Look. <laughs> Luke said it first. <laughs> Do you want to call him? Yeah. He called me out a nink nincompoop on stage yesterday. When there, there will be a public apology? I love you, Luke. Oh. <laughs> Aww. 
Now. Yeah. Now, now, now. Where is it? Where is it? So, the anonymous user is asking, do you have an alert for all the team when you get fired? <laughs> I've been fired countless times. And uh, I just keep showing up for work and Taylor keeps paying me. So, while that, that works for me at the moment, so I'm keeping, <laughs> keeping on it. Keeping the vibe rolling. Yeah, until I stop getting paid or I get removed from everything, then uh, I'm still turning up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Big applause for James.